I'm Jeff's engine. Where are we? Well, I don't know where I was last time, but the intake charge tubes installed, all the piping's hooked up, the oil line to the turbo is installed. It wraps around the back of the engine, plugs in right there. Hope you can see that. Uh, I got a starter on it. I spun the engine. After I pre-lubed the, the cam, spun up the engine, make sure the oil pressure came up to the turbo. I unbolted the drain from the turbo, make sure oil was pouring out of there, and it was. The turbo spins really nice. It's nice and free, no excessive play. It's got a little bit of play, but it's a journal bearing, so I know, it's, you know, that's okay. So there you have it. So this guy is pretty much ready for the intake manifold. So let us segue to... The intake manifold. Okay, this is something Jeff provided to me. Now, when I first got these injectors, only two were clicking with the battery test jig here. You plug that in and pull the trigger. Uh, only two were clicking. Uh, I soaked them in some uh, uh, carb cleaner. That's the tips, you know, up to about right there. Soaked them in carb clean overnight. A bunch of brown gunk came out. You can even see even stained them a little bit. I don't know if you can see that or not, but that's kind of stained brown. They were perfectly clean before, so definitely something was happening. Um, I think that freed up like two, so I had two still that weren't working. And, you know, per Jeff's advice, I just took them and just smacked them on the vise, the metal part on a vise, and that brought them right back to life. So, good job, Jeff. You're right about that. Now, after doing all that, uh, I set them up on the on the test jig. I just actually had them just bolted that motor. I just I got that off, but I had it hooked up to the fuel supply, and I had a lot of leakers. It wouldn't hold pressure at all, and you know, one some of them were just leaking like a slit sieve. So I've been pumping them on, function on and off, and trying to clean them up and see if I can get that under control. Now the the paper tissues are there to help me confirm if there's any leakage because sometimes they'll leak out of those little holes and drip down it's hard to see so what we do now is we just power it up and the other thing i noticed is i think it's just, i don't know if it's a regulator or a pump but it doesn't hold pressure well real well but that may not be totally i don't really care if this thing is leaking a little bit you know when it shuts off or if it's back flowing back through the through the uh through the pump who cares the main thing is when the injectors are turned off do they leak because you know you don't want to flood a cylinder. So let's try it. I'm going to power it up real quick. I have a spark far away from the gas just in case. So we've got the regulator set to about 36. Confirm that over here. Okay, so it's using this fancy fancy regulator that Jeff got for me here I'll, I'll pull pull a vacuum on it let's see if it goes up actually went down like it's supposed to that makes sense okay I'm not seeing anything pouring out nothing really That's good. Uh, I think I see a little bit of leakage going on here. Let's see. Nope, that's good. This is all good. You want this to be dry. That's good. And that one looks a little... That one might be leaking a little bit. Not much. As long as they're not pouring out like a sieve. Okay. Yeah, that was a tiny little bit of dampness happening there. But this one's a little damp. I can see it kind of drizzling out right there. I don't know if you can see that, but it's kind of a little bit of drizzle. So what we'll do is I'll hit it a few times. A pretty good spray pattern. It's like a four, almost looks like it's a four pattern, but it's a pencil, so I don't really understand that. Okay, it's shutting off, which is good. It's not staying on after you turn it on, you know. 
Good, good. They look pretty consistent as far as how much. I'm not going to bother with measuring and all that kind of stuff. You can kind of tell. Not leaking, not leaking, not leaking. The reason I did this this way with this manifold is you have to have... Well, I'll talk about that in just a second. Oh, oh, I see a dripper. I see a leaker. Where's that coming from? Oh, this guy right here. This guy right here is leaking. Okay, that's not horrible, but, you know, you don't want it to leak at all. That's okay. Yeah, you can kind of see where the leaker's coming from just by looking down here at the pattern. That drop right there. Nobody else is dripping anything yet. Let's uh, hit that guy a couple more times. It'll probably improve with use as a gasoline flows through it. Gasoline's a good solvent. Would be cool to get a match on that and get a torch, eh? I hear the thunder in the background. I think we're good. Yep. Well, anyway, that's that. Oh, the reason I did all this setup. Me now. Now, watch what I mean about the pressure holding. Ready? I'll disconnect this. And I don't know where that's leaking down from. I think it might be a common because it's not leaking here. So as long as it's not leaking here, I don't care. Um, but anyway, with respect to why I have them installed in the manifold, well. This kind of rail has O-rings, and I also want to make sure this wasn't leaking here. I don't feel any dampness coming from around those where they plug in. They just, it's not particularly tight, but anyway, um, that kind of rail just uses the, they just stab in with an O-ring. So my, my fear was if I didn't install them in a manifold like this, they just blow out from pressure. So that's why I have this intake manifold installed here because I wanted to be able to observe the spray pattern and I wanted to pressurize and test them, but it, you know, if I put on the, on the installed engine, I wouldn't be able to see anything. It'd be squirting through the cylinders. So that's what that's all about. So I'm going to muss around with this a little bit more, give it a few more cycles and make sure I'd like to maybe run some uh, fuel injector cleaner through it. If I had some, I would, I don't know, maybe I'll go to an auto parts store and get some, but I mean, they're looking pretty good. I don't really think that's going to be an issue as long as nothing gets hung up. And like I said, the more you use it, the more they'll improve from self-cleaning. But I think Jeff's got a winner with respect to uh, this cool rail. It's super easy to install. I really like that. Um, I was able to tweak this little screw here, Jeff, to get it right set right at like 36, 38. So you're good to go there. We already saw that the vacuum is working. So overall, uh, it's moving right along. Talk to you later. Thanks. Bye.